come on now, Luch, I made a whole video praising you to the high heavens on your introduction and your build-up, but now, I'm going to make a whole video clown on you, my boy. Thank you to our $5 patrons, Sidney's Lancelot, Art Goon, and the Divine on Poop. And big thank you to our $25 patron, the Mr. Greed. Now, before we have this breakdown of chapter 329 of Black Clover, please in favor leave your own list on the chapter in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you aren't already. Also, make sure that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as $1 a month. Any support would be appreciated. Now, let's get into last week's poll. So, I ended up asking y'all last week, how do we feel about Lushi really being taken out of the narrative, right? Like, he's done on the ground, defeated, no more Lushi, essentially. How did we feel about that? What was the community consensus? And with a total of 142 votes and four options of good riddance, I'm gonna miss them, this is whack, and it's whatever, the leading factor was this was whack at a juicy 68%. A whole ton of y'all, just like me, agreed he shouldn't have gone out this way. And to be fair, we weren't sure if he was really gone out or like he was really done done. But when you get quarter sected and you're literally lying head first on the ground with nothing but an arm and some severed arms at that, you don't look too good. And the follow-up result, shockingly enough, was it's whatever. <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's sad. Like I put that in there as the fourth option because I was like, you know, I, I know there are gonna be some people out there like this because I've almost had that reaction too, where it's like it'd be like that when it'd be like that sometimes. Like sometimes you just gotta get rid of a villain even if you don't like how the villain's gotten rid of. And a lot of y'all agree with that too. And then the next one up after that was good riddance. Luchi was whack anyway. He needed to go. This actually I expected to be the least voted on, but. Actually, it doesn't. It, it makes sense why it's the second to least, with 11% of the vote. And then finally, we have I'm gonna miss him. He was a cool king at 8%. Notably, I have very mixed feelings about what happened this chapter and what happened last chapter, but I am definitely leaning more towards this is whack, and I'll get into why in a bit. However, thank you for everyone who participated in the poll. I love doing these polls. It's great to get the community consensus, seeing what everyone thinks, and please make sure you participate in tomorrow's poll, dropping at 12 p.m. in order to make sure your input is included for next week's review. Now, let's get into chapter 329. What's up guys, I'm Glad Clancy, and here we are to break down chapter 329 of Black Clover, which is known as the Demon King and the Magicless Boys. And kind of, kind of, like this was a, I'll admit, this was a very much a combo effort, but obviously the end of this chapter does mainly happen because of the two Magicless Boys. So it's a very apt title, but I'd really say Farewell to the Demon King. That's what I call this chapter. However, of course, let's hop into it. We open up. We get to see that Luchi's like, there's absolutely no way I fumbled this world. There's no way I fumbled this horribly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he doesn't say it like that, but that's honestly what's going through his head right now. And I don't blame him because he shouldn't have fumbled. Like, the fact that he went from showing up, what, like 15-ish chapters ago at this point and was bodying everybody like everyone was getting dog walked like fresh out before full power before all that everyone getting dog walked so the fact that in a matter of like 15 or so chapters he is now quarter sected on the ground just because he didn't take his job seriously enough pretty darn embarrassing and of course he's having an identity crisis right now because he's literally going over like wait 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 hold on hold on i'm the greatest demon luchi i am the strongest of my entire species i have the most powerful magic Arguable, I don't know, like if they're dream magic users or any like time magic users, even space magic users, I think they're stronger, than, but still, like, I I have the strongest magic, no one could ever harm me. I, I really wonder about that though, but regardless of that, he's essentially breaking down internally, right? And as you would, he's, I, he's had this ideal of himself for who knows how many years in the other world. We don't know how long these creatures actually live for. We've never actually been given a specific death date for these creatures. And I forget how old Zagrid was, but he didn't look any worse for wear after how many years it's been since the time of the first fairy king. Fairy king. I'm not reading Seven Deadly Sins. The first wizard king. So it's entirely likely that these things live for forever if uninterrupted or like at least extremely long lifespans if they have nothing obviously kill them. So I'm not shocked that Lucci, after living as a king or as uh, not a king, the king for who knows how many years when put down in this embarrassing situation where he still has all his cognitive thought, he's breaking out. He's freaking out because and I love what he sees here, right? Because of how ingrained and how valued magic is within the world of Black Clover, 
the two creatures that stand above him that are looking down on him don't even have faces. He doesn't even recognize them as sentient things. He calls them brats, which admittedly has some form of context to cognitive thinking there. But he doesn't see their faces. He doesn't view them as equals. He doesn't even view them in the same playing field or realm that he's in. However, they're standing up looking over his flayed corpse and <laughs> well, he's lying on the ground being the flayed corpse. So obviously one of these two is much more successful at what they've done. And I love how Lucci in this moment, like what, once his identity is being questioned, right? Once his whole existence is laid bare before him and he's realizing that in this moment he really can true and properly die. He rejects it. He's like, there's no way I could ever lose. And even as literally just like I said last chapter, a torso, part, not even a whole torso, part of a torso and two severed arms with severed horns, he still manages to activate the presence of the Demon King and Asta and Lieb fall. Because before, Lieb could like produce enough antimatic to coat them to not be affected by this. However, obviously, they used up all their energy for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> almost all their energy but they used up a whole ton of their energy up to this point so obviously Lieb can't really coat ant their body as an anti-magic to ignore this gravity magic and thus Lucy rises up and he once again is going on that internal crisis right he's like how dare you even look down upon me for a moment and honestly is it weird to say I want Lucci back? So, <laughs> like, straight up. Because this this kind of internal breakdown, and to be fair, it can't happen from a person who was born strong and always meant to be a king, right? Like, he would he just was born a high-level underworld creature, which is likely. I don't think... It's very rare, I'm assuming, for underworld creatures to rise in rank. So it's entirely possible that Lucci was always meant to be the mightiest. But I, the way he's speaking, right? He's like... How dare you look down on me for even a moment? Like, he, the speech bubbles aren't sharp, they're shaky. Like, he's he's questioning himself. So I wonder if there was ever a point in Lucci's past where, like, say his rivals or anything like that look down upon him, or he's lost in the past before, and this is sort of like bringing up old traumas. Like, I know I'm adding, <laughs> like, way too much to a simple line of text, but just the way that the speech bubbles are drawn... They don't seem to be drawn with anger. They seem to be drawn with, like, resentment, fear, maybe even regret. Like, there's there's something there. There's something there that's spicy, if you know what I'm saying. And, of course, as he crushes them to death, he he tries to, like, make excuses here. He's like, half my strength still lies in the other world. I'm not in my full strength yet. Or otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do this to me. However, now that I know that one shot is around 7.5 times... That true DU Asta would one shot you, bro. You getting twice as powerful is not gonna mean anything. But at the same time, like Lucci, the the thing is, right? This is entirely Lucci's fault. Like, there's nothing here to signify. Like, usually, sometimes I'll give villains passes if they end up in situations like this. Like, they just end up running against true equals that they didn't know they had. But no, from the moment Lucci was introduced, the second he blitzed Asta, Asta should have been dead. Like this isn't this isn't a complicated thing, and the thing is, Lucci had no reason to leave Asta alive for as long as he did to push him to this point. She just offed him instantly. Like the moment, like if I'm Lucci, the moment I spawn, right? Everyone remembers the chapter. Asta's flying in, wondering what everyone is doing on the ground, and Lucci, bam, right there. Now, Asta couldn't even perceive him. Lieb couldn't perceive him. If I was Lucci in that moment, you're the guy who saw me from fully manifesting. Your head's gone. Like, it's it's as simple as that. So when Lucci is, like, par like parading, like, I have my strength. I got it. I'm better. I got I got I'm better. Like, Lucci, you could have done the job that you need to get done to stay fully manifested or to possibly at least stay 50% immediately. And you not doing that is entirely your fault. And it doesn't, like, I get it. The Demon King is arrogant, right? He's viewing these creatures without magic. But on multiple occasions, he's acknowledged that these creatures, in terms of Yami and Asta, are the only things that could have ever done this to him. So the fact that he, at all, in any universe, allowed them to live, when he explicitly had the power, speed, and capabilities to annihilate them... Kind of stupid, dog. Kind of stupid. And I love how we see Melly. He's just looking on like... This is kind of stupid. Kind of stupid. Like, the fact that he's... E even if... Like, say he had won right here and then, right? Like, say he truly crushed them with anti-magic. Bada bing, bada boom. Not anti-magic. Gravity magic. They died. He won, blah, blah, blah. It's still an L. Like, and I think even Melly knows that. Like, 
dude, you're literally a screaming half torso right now with your arms cut off. You, you, you lost that fight, bro. Like, you know how... Remember how Ultra Instinct <laughs> Goku had beat Jiren? Like, it was Jiren was on his knees and was giving up and ready to suck it up and admit that he lost. But at the very last second, blah, 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 like, Goku's back exploded because Ultra Instinct relapsed. Or relapsed, not relapsed, um, backlash. So, really, if you... <laughs> Push up my glasses. If you were to ask me, it, it would I would classify that as a W for uh, Ultra Instinct Goku. I just can't help that his form ran out. Meanwhile, if we're um, looking at um, the idea of Lucha here, uh, he allowed Asta to reach his transcendent state when he explicitly didn't want to. You can argue and extrapolate from the Tournament of Power that Jiren was actually interested in seeing Goku's full power, and lastly, it makes sense that he would withdraw Ultra Instinct and then readily admit to a loss there. Meanwhile, Luchi has no reason to um, do such a thing, so it's kind of out of character and pretty stupid that he ended up losing in this very specific way. Or maybe he shouldn't have introduced the, a final tier villain this early so he could uh, die. <laughs> but in actuality, right? I'm so sorry about that. that was, I think that was the longest take of that voice I've ever done. But we see that Luchi is essentially trying to off them, right? He's like, you can't do anything now. Fall, be crushed. In the end, it's your loss, you pieces of filth. Like, he, he really is about that action. However... I have nowhere, some, like, I get it, these two are some of the most durable creatures to roam the, roam the planet, but y'all literally, like, his, Luchi's arms, they, they haven't even gone limp, like, that's how crazy Luchi's arms are, like, they are still holding the finger pose that they did as they impaled Yami and Nacht, but somehow these two are able to reactivate their mana zone? After getting potted like that, I get the I get the anti magic field is down because Ost is down. But at the same time, geez, they pop out, and Luchi is shocked to see them. And of course, in the old Black Bull's fashion, both Nock and Yami say, "Here and now, we'll surpass our limits." And obviously, Luchi is like, "I mean, you 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 can try, but being real with you." Looking at that buddy -o that uh, I just put on the floor, he can't even stand anymore. You can't even begin to amount, but of course, Asta stands. And <laughs> here's the thing, right? Like, isn't his leg broken? I don't know. And I know he, but he, but pencil, he was just in true devil. You didn't complain about his leg being broken, but like, at least there was power, of course. Like, the fact that Asta can still stand here, it's. It, it's it's part of the narrative, right? Like the narrative that Asta, he's he his magic power is never giving up. So even in the hardest of circumstances, he can stand and wield his blade for the sake of his people to protect the kingdom and protect the humans and save all of his friends. Like I get it, I really do get it. But at the same time, it's like, ugh. And even even Luchi's like, uh, what kind of, what kind of mess is this? And of course, we get to see as Asta prepares himself for a swing. Luchi has, once again, for the first time, genuine fear in his eyes. Like, Asta looks at him with this determined look like, like, y'all remember the Land of Waves arc? I'm gonna kill you! Like, on, on that early part one Naruto type B. Like, and I will admit, like, as much as I, I, I have so many mixed feelings on the end of Luchi, essentially. But, the non the nonverbal storytelling in this chapter is amazing. Like you you don't need like the, just the shot of Asta's eye there tells you everything you need to know. Like there he doesn't have to say I'm gonna kill you. He's literally just looking at you like you're gonna die. <laughs> like you could almost hear him saying it calmly. I'm not sure if Asta's VA could say it calmly, but in terms of like the look, the blood, like the veins coursing through his eyes, like the shaking tears, the the heated breath, like he's. I'm not sure how cold it is right now, but he's literally exhaling fog and stuff like that. Like, he is ready. He's rearing up. And the same thing with Luchi's face there. Like, you can tell there is a distinct fear there. There's not a word that needs to be said. Just looking at the panel, the way he's staring at Asta, he's like, oh no, I'm about to perish. And I think that's great. That's great. That's really, really good. However, of course, Yami has to point it out, right? He's laughing and he goes on to say, like, huh, come on now. Mr. Demon King, are you afraid of our little brat here? And obviously, <laughs> Luchi, Luchi doesn't necessarily dignify it with a response, but he does run. Like there's the, the he doesn't he doesn't take the risk, right? Like he takes his little dark matter and begins to fly away. And like, <laughs> dude, 
It's it's literally it's literally a Scooby Doo plot, bro. Like it's a Scooby Doo runaway. <laughs> like next time I'll get you. Next time you meddling kids with my full strength, I'm killing you all. Like dude, like what the my favorite thing about Lucci was the fact that he was unfazed, right? Like the, there was no point up until recently where Lucci felt genuine fear or like not even genuine fear, right? Because you can feel genuine fear and still be amazing, but. He, he had, once again, ironically enough, he had this presence to him. He had the presence of the Demon King. He felt absolute. And for him to be devalued in this way, I get it. He's on his deathbed and he's running for his life, of course. But I feel like it just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't hit right. Like, it doesn't, like, there are more dignified ways to go out. If you, you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of a metric to compare it to, but it's, su it's such a specific situation that only works with someone like Lucci. So, like, um, uh, what's a case? I'm, try I'm trying to, th I'm really trying to think of a case here where a really respectable, top of the line villain, like uh, someone who was truly about that life, about that action, to the point where you believed everything they said, you believed all their actions, and their actions had this hefty, weighty, boothy <laughs> presence to them. I'm trying to think of a point where, in a matter of chapters, in a matter of weeks, the whole MO was flipped, and now they're running away and declaring, I'll get you next time, Gadget! Like, I don't know, it just, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right, if that makes sense. And I'm not sure if anyone is on the same page as me here, but that, that's the thing. I'm not, I will, I'll explain why I don't like Lucci being defeated here at all, and I feel like, if anything, he should have escaped, but... It just whew, whew, it doesn't feel right. But obviously, as Lucci is too busy turning his head and declaring that, I'll get you next time, get it? Um, a star appears. And notably, the star appears right under Kid's Playground and right above Lucci. And, of course, in an instant, Asta appears, blade up, mid-swing. And Lucci is completely caught off guard. And he's one. He notices the star just a bit too late. Like he sees the star, the, we get a shot of the star above his head, and notably we see lying down, pimping as always. Next time, there's not gonna be one. Isn't that right, bro, Asta? And you know, just activate his star magic. Shout out to you know, big dubs for you know, big dubs for you know. And Bay's bleeding out. Shout out to them. And Asta swings down and cleaves Lucci. He doesn't cleave him in half. He probably doesn't have the strength to at this point. But he does cleave him enough that the rest of his horn comes off. Lucci's screaming in agony, and he's laying on the ground dead. <laughs> like, and I what? And hopefully, like this is a this is a this is a very mixed bag. Like, depending on what this means, this could be bad or awful. <laughs> and I'll explain it a little bit. But of course, as the shadows, the uh, kids' playground fades out. We see everyone bleeding, defeated, bloodied. Except, well, no, the, our combatants are. Like, like, you know, Asta, not, well, yeah, you know, Asta, Yami, not, like, they're all bleeding and sweating and in pain. Meanwhile, Patri and William are just watching, <laughs> unharmed, undamaged, unfazed. Like, come on now, bro, why? And, well, I know why. And then, obviously, Vanessa and Gray. But even then, they have damage and sweat on them. So I'll give them more credit than... <laughs> More credit than our main antagonist for the first half of the story and William, but you get to see. And I, I, to be fair, I did predict last chapter, and I've been predicting it for a couple of chapters. That good job, like, like I really did think Melly was going to clap, and he does clap. He has this, and I, and I love the look on his face. This is the first time I've ever seen him like smile, smile. Like this is the first time he's ever felt engaged. So to see Melly being like, "Good job, you guys win," like I, I, I feel like that was a hundred percent genuine. And obviously, you get this nice ending shot where, uh, like, the Demon King's just lying there dead, and Asta and Lee are just breathing heavy. However, let me get into that was whack. Um, it's essentially right. Uh, there's this rule. Well, this is a rule for me at least, and I'm not sure how many times I can bring it up. But here, imagine here. Here's a popular series that I feel like a lot of people should know. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Spoilers for Avatar: The Last Airbender. If you been living under a rock but imagine if instead of building up and saving ozai for the final fight in the big three-part finale to your entire series 
you introduced Ozai in maybe the middle of the series, like m literally mid plot, and then you defeated him, and he got away and said, "I'll get you next time, Gadget." Would Ozai have the exact same impact? And I know Ozai works much better as a idea and a concept than an actual character. I'm, I love what Mark Hamill does with the character, but at the same time, he's not as intimidating because he very quickly gets. He gets hard. He gets Uda reverse carded pretty quickly, but essentially that idea, right? Imagine in let's say Percy Jackson, right? Like, and arguably you can say the movies did this, but towards Percy Jackson, imagine if in the middle of Heroes of Olympus, right? Like, say Mark of Athena starts halfway through. They just leave New Rome, and bam, Gaia drops out the sky at half power, and then they defeat Gaia after a long grueling fight, and then Gaia runs away and says, "I'll get you next time, Gadget," and then you fight Gaia again in the final book. Think of, and I, I know I'm saying, I'm bringing so many examples, but I'm just I'm trying to get the idea across here. Imagine if in the middle, and actually I can't, because the cell arc technically does that, but in here, imagine this. Say in the middle of the Tournament of Power, <laughs> since I used that reference earlier, say Jiren pops up, fights, and wins, or no, loses. And then he just goes off. Like, he straight runs off and is like, I'll get you next time. Even though this tournament's still going on. There's still a plot going on. There's still a whole story going on. That's what happened here. Lucci is what, at least, and this is just my assumption. Who knows? Maybe the whole Underworld plot is really nothing. Maybe it's just the elf arc all over again, where in the end there are going to be creatures even stronger than this that the humans are going to have to surpass. But at least from my understanding, the buildup, the entire centralization around Asta's character, it felt like this arc was supposed to be something endgame, right? But apparently, at least unless I'm mishearing all this and Black Clover is actually going to end very, very soon, this is like midpoint in the story. And Lucci is meant to be a final villain, or at least that's what my assumption was. This is the culmination of Lieb's character arc. He he killed a Lucci. <laughs> like, this is weird to say, but he got the job done. What's le Like, my, my point is here, essentially... What's left now that the deed is done? And hypothetically, say this is Lucci's half power. Now, because the thing that scares me the most, right, is Yuno's line here where he says, next time, there's not going to be one. Does that mean that Lucci's power, the other half is still in the underworld, is gone now? Or does it mean, like, if Lucci does come back, he'll just get fauterized again because he can only manifest 50% of his power. Does the body that died here contain 50% of his power and that's just going to disperse into the world? Like, what Like what are we What are we doing here? And my main point about all the examples, right? In my mind, even if Lucci does come back, Lucci comes back full power, new form, all his magic. He gets a green more, amazing, awesome, epic. It's not going to hit. It's not going to hit. Like you, this is a case, you can only do this once. You can only introduce a final end game tier villain once and have it hit. Their defeat hit. And to be fair, this defeat doesn't, that's a whole other point for another day. I'm going to make a whole video on why Lucci's defeat is booty. But in actuality, you can't, I don't know, I feel like you can't bring Lucci back at this point. Because there's no respect for the character. I, like, th this entire chapter degrades the character into a go-go gadget villain. I don't know why I keep saying gadget. I never actually even watched that show. <laughs> but the thing is, the that's the thing. It's a Scooby-Doo villain. I'll get you next time. The You meddling kids. Like, it literally is that. How am I supposed to respect this? How am I supposed to fear this character? Oh, but Pencil, he's going to come back in the future. I 100% and be super strong. Is he? I don't know, true, true DU, Asta seemed to pack him up, and I know Asta's going to train for that again. He, Lucci could show up six months later and be like, I'm at full power, and Asta's going to be like, okay, so am I, and then body bag him again. Or, like, there's nothing, there's no tension around Lucci as a character now. This chapter essentially killed all tension that could have existed forever, because Lucci died. I don't, like, it's, it's very weird to explain, but nothing, like, for Resurrection Act fans, we wanted Vegeta to kill Frieza, right? Like, that was our that was our goal. We wanted Vegeta to get the dub against Frieza. But were, was anyone intimidated by Frieza? Like, they were when v Frieza first showed up in that Namekian village and killed all those people? <laughs> was anyone really phased or shocked or excited by Frieza's death when he died? Or his fighting or anything like that? Was anything excited about Frieza the second go-around? What about the third go-around? What about the fourth go-around? Like, reusing villains 
and any degree, and especially, and who knows, maybe Lucha, and that's the thing, there's no, there's no good way, there's no path you can take this, like, even if you were to go to my, the stupid, well, not stupid, I don't know, I think it's like, I, I've seen people call it stupid, I think it's actually a pretty cool idea, that Melly set all this up, like, this is maybe a fraction of Lucci's power, like that. I would be fine with this not being Lucci, because if that's the case, you can kind of salvage it. Yeah, you beat this Lucci, but this was my perception of him, my dream of Lucci. In actuality, he's way, way stronger than that. You humans still have a long way to go. I did that entire simulation to train you all for the real thing. That would be something that could save Lucci. But considering I don't think that's going to happen, based on Melly's happy reaction to the fact that he gets to be the Demon King now, I don't, like, Lucci as a villain has been destroyed in a matter of 15 chapters, if that. And that's embarrassing. The fact that this endgame tier villain dies at a midpoint in the story, and the entire build-up and hype around him went from him being this unstoppable basketballing force to a dude that got soloed in five slices. Super duper embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. It's just it's not the way I wanted to go. That's it. I'll make a whole video talking about Lucci and his end and how embarrassing it is. It'll be a, it'll be a mirror image to the how great I think Lucci's build-up was. However, this leads to next chapter. I really think Melly's just gonna step up. Everyone's too drained, everyone's too tired. Like, I know a big point was that Asta was supposed to get packed apparently sometime. Like, what, I think Julius said that Asta was going to die at some point and everyone's essentially been waiting for them. Obviously, Lucci's not gonna do it. Lucci's dead. So maybe Melly packs him up here as like a way to avoid dealing with the antimatic spawn in the future. And that's fine, that's cool. Once again, Melly, as cool as I think Melly is, right? They have a really cool design and they have this really interesting personality and I'm great and I'm excited to hear their motives and I want to see them fight and all the stuff like that. Melly is I know he's some somebody in the original lore where this comes from, like I think the, the original Celtic lore or something like that. But in terms of our narrative buildup, Melly Melly is a no one. He's nobody. No one like personally, I'm not invested in Melly. I was invested in Lucci. And then he's gone. So now I have this side villain that's gonna have to come and pick up this pick up the slack. And, I don't know, I'm just not, not really rock with it. But next chapter, Melly presumably is going to walk up and be like, good job, deuces, kill Asta, leave. I don't, I don't really know. However, <laughs> those are my thoughts on the chapter. Please leave me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that little notification bell so you miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as $1 a month. Any support would be appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Zach with the Pencil, writing off.